Today, the first asset pack for City Skylines 2 was released, Beach Properties. Alongside the pack is the introduction of Paradox Mods, bringing code modding and the map editor to the game, and of course, a slew of bug fixes and improvements. Beach Properties is the first item released in the Waterfronts Expansion Pass, which includes this asset pack, two creator packs, urban promenades and modern architecture, the Bridges and Ports expansion, and three radio stations. In this new asset pack, we have new low density residential buildings. The Steam page describes it as 10 buildings in each North American and European style with three levels for each building. I've gone into the developer menu and plopped down each unique building I could find, organizing them by their plot size. You'll see two different versions available within some of the plot sizes and otherwise I've plopped levels one, three, and five. Level two buildings are visually the same as level one and level four buildings are visually the same as level three. If you were to plop a few more of these at a time or let them grow in, in, you'll see some variations happen in their props, wall colors, and roof colors. With a mod like Plop the Growables, which we might just see later in this video, having this variety available will certainly go a long way to bringing more life into our cities, I think. Also included in this pack are three signature buildings for each of the two building styles. These are quite luxurious looking, and like the other residential signature buildings, they each offer a well-being bonus within a certain range. You unlock these in regular gameplay by having waterfront housing buildings in your city, producing lodging goods, and producing recreation goods. Maybe a good time to lower taxes on those commercial types to encourage them to grow in your city. Finally, in this pack are four palm trees. They're in the usual vegetation menu, and now you can scroll down by clicking on this little button over here. We have the coconut palm tree, Florida palm tree, royal palm tree, and Sylvester palm tree. Stay tuned for the bug fixes and improvements later for the real exciting tree news. But first, Paradox Mods exists. For now, we have what are being referred to as code mods, custom maps, and save games. Put another way, custom assets are not yet available on Paradox Mods, but your other modded needs should all be attended to soon, as soon as modders can do the thing. Speaking of people doing their thing, why don't you click the like button on the video while I click this editor button? We can see this is a beta version of the editor featuring map creation tools. One question I know people may have and can answer answer is that yes, you can import height maps. Now, I've never really made a map in City Skylines, but I absolutely want to. Seeing Sanctum Gamer do his thing is just way inspiring. Consider it on my list of things to learn. Okay, I have purposely avoided most direct information about Paradox Mods so that I can experience this for the first time with you, and together we can get an idea of what Paradox Mods is like for a relatively inexperienced player. Paradox Mods! Getting latest updates. Welcome to Paradox Mods. Nice to see you here. Can you, can you see me? They make note here that asset mods, so they do call assets mods still. That might be confusing for some people, but that's what us City Skylines 1 players know as assets. They aren't available yet, but everything else is. Cool. So on this first, oh, this is the feature page. We have most popular mods and move it is number one. And that is not surprising in the slightest. I can click load more. Oh, I see. And it brings us to the browse tab and it's sorted by most popular. Cool. Oh, we have tags over here. So we can sort for save game. Oh, cool. I can look at the Fort Johnson trailer city. I guess I'm going to do that. So you can subscribe right from here. And I guess because that's there, I can now remove it from my playset. Okay. Cool. Let's look at maps. I think I should probably also do one of these. Oh, I mean, that's easy. Let's click on Magnolia County by CPP and it's got pictures. That's normal. Tells us how big it is. That's great. How many likes the suggested game version. There's a report button. I guess I will add this to my active playset. I believe playsets are basically what we are used to as collections from Steam. And then of course, let's look at some mods. I mean, the first mod we have to subscribe to is Move It, right? It has to be. 
So let's subscribe to move it. And if we scroll down, this is what we, this is the kind of stuff that we're used to reading on mods, like from the description in the Steam Workshop is what we would be used to previously. So this is all still here, which is great. I wonder if we will have a mod called ability to read <laughs> that will be a dependency at some point. I think you can click on somewhere it shows, oh yeah, here, you can see the change log. I knew this was a thing that existed. Okay, so I assume that'll get much longer as time goes on. It looks like people can add links because links were, I think for City Planner Plays, he had his YouTube there. So I'm assuming that's changeable by the author. Um, you all should probably go to patreon.com slash cuboid. I think that's an appropriate place for you to go. Very cool. Let's go back. Let's grab a couple other mods. Oh, look it. So this one by Algernon. This is the line tool. It has a required mod, which is fab. So now I can go to that required mod. Let's add it. And then when I press back, it brings me back to the line tool. Let's grab it. Uh, same kind of thing. Everything's written down as far as how you can do stuff. I love that for us. Now, if I click on Algernon, I can see a bunch of other mods that they've done, which is rad. I'm a huge fan, to be honest. Plop the growables, I'm pretty sure I said those exact words earlier. That is exciting. Disables growable building zone checks. Yes, please, thank you. Might as well grab a free range camera. Now we're just mod shopping together. I'm just kind of scrolling down and seeing what they say over here. Oh, I love this. Algernon is a good human. They've put here, hey, aspiring modders, come ask me questions. That's really sweet. That's very kind. Hey, so I clicked on this historical start. I think I was part of requesting this kind of accidentally, <laughs> but it says this mod is not compatible with your game version. That's fab. So that's like very obvious, which is great. I'm not going to subscribe to that one. I won't install it. Let's just see what happens with the mods that we have. Okay, so here's playsets, initial playset. So I, I didn't call it that. I could pr create a new one because I'm so clever. Ah, so it's active right now. So if I wanna go back to this one, oh, it looks like I can do it from here. Use this playset. Oh, excellent, okay. And I can click in it and I can, oh, I can enable them and disable them from within it. That's really cool. Oh, and you can change the load order. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, cool. So I just clicked and dragged that. Okay, neat. Let's reset it. Sure. I love if that does take care of load order properly. That's a feature in RimWorld and I am very grateful for it. And then library. So this is just kind of all of my mods. Neat. Okay, so now what? Ah, uh, see here, list of enabled code mods changed the game restart. The game restart required. BRB, restart done. I think if I go new game, oh, custom maps, Magnolia County. I think I like that it's on a separate tab. Yeah, I think I like that because it'll make it easy to access, right? You're not just scrolling through loads of maps. Let's though load into a game. Don't laugh at my save names, uh, Fort Johnson. And it's got the little, I guess, that's the Paradox logo in a, Cloud, maybe? Load game. Yeah, let's just load it. Okay, very cool. So, oh, look it. This is the Move It mod. Let us come over here and press on the Move It mod. Oh, it's like I'm at home. I'm home. Amazing. Oh, look at that, okay. All right, well, you could just go over there. I'm gonna show you guys this. Okay, Paradox Mods, I'm, can I just do this? I can, this is Move It, right? So we can just read, oh man, here. I know you could do this on a side monitor, I guess, but like for people who don't have a side monitor, you can just load up Paradox Mods and just read it. And this, to enter manipulation mode. Okay, here, Alt-M. Yes, mode, manipulation. Oh, there's tool tips. So I think I can do this. Guys, there's like basically node controller in move it. I'm just throwing that out there. I'm just, I'm just throwing, of course it's breaking everything, but I'm very okay with that. And then I think you can somehow do marquee mode. Was that control M? How did I get, yeah, 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 mode marquee, okay. Okay, anyways, that's, that's Move It Mod. Um, and I think I also downloaded the line tool. Oh, 
<gasps> Look it. Okay, so if I go to the new fancy trees and I go straight line. Oh my goodness. Oh, you can do everything that you used to be able to do. You can change the spacing. Oh, and you can see it. You can ah rotate the trees randomly. Oh, oh, cool. Spacing variation. So it's not just like a perfect, that's a really cool addition. Amazing. Oh, we can do a circle too. Oh no. Okay. Guys, I thought I was going to play a vanilla game. Are there? Yeah. Cool. So you still have options. Oh yeah. Look at, so you can rotate things just like you could before. And I think I read, yeah, look, and I'm pressing page up and I can like lift this guy up. So you can still do crazy things. Oh, and control Z still works. Well, that's Paradox Mods. I'm going to uh, go mod shopping now. So from someone who admittedly I have seen this exist before, but I haven't tinkered with it and I haven't gone in and tried to subscribe to things. It seems like this is pretty usable. It sounds like the devs are also listening to feedback from the modders. I think that's the whole point of having the modders have early access, right? So I'm excited to see where this ends up. Dropping alongside the asset pack and Paradox mods is an update that includes various bug and performance fixes. More complete patch notes should be available as of the 25th, but I'm able to cover some bits that I think are important and exciting. First thing I noticed that I don't think is listed in the patch notes, so I'm not sure if it's intentional or not, but when you open a menu that automatically brings up the info view with it, pressing the I hotkey no longer removes the info view colors. Now I have to press escape to close the info view. So if you're like me and developed muscle memory of pressing I, that may take that may take getting used to. They've noted updates to reduce frame time spikes, optimize overall simulation performance, culling and UI rendering, general performance, more good stuff. There is now a sound when firefighting helicopters are extinguishing flames. The bus stop, bus shelter, taxi stand, taxi shelter, and tram stop icons have been changed. The guidelines and cursor are now easier to see on snow. It looks like the cursor may have more blue. I'm saving the best for last, so here I'll name a couple more minor bug fixes. Cargo vehicles spawning in the middle of the building has been fixed, as has them rarely using anything but the first two loading bays in the cargo terminals. An issue with train stops appearing on outside connections has been fixed. Service vehicles should no longer despawn after completing their tasks, like putting out a fire or delivering the dead, and they should no longer stop or slow down at the wrong spot behind a queue of vehicles waiting to turn. Garbage trucks, road maintenance vehicles, and post vans should no longer use bus stop bays for driving. There are a few fixes related to the camera and especially the cinematic camera, but the most notable one to me is that you can now have the cinematic camera higher than where it was stuck before on the Tampere and San Francisco maps. It feels much more in line with what you can see on all the maps when using it. This warning about achievements being disabled now specifically states that it was because unlock all or unlimited money was selected when the save was first made. And if you go to turn on either of those on a save that previously didn't have them, you get this additional warning. Water and sewage capacity notifications have been fixed as has an issue where some notifications stayed in their original place when when you moved a building. And now we get to my three favorite updates in this patch. I am stoked, my friends. I've had this problem a lot personally where I'm placing roads and my mouse feels like stuck down or something and I have right clicked to exit out of marking a curve and suddenly the game thinks I'm trying to place a node way over there at the edge of my screen. Not game breaking or world shattering, but certainly a bit obnoxious. And I am pretty sure it has been fixed in this patch. It's phrased as some states getting stuck if mouse press and release happened during the same frame. So, in theory, us quick clickers get to rejoice. Next up, a simple but oh so pleasing addition. Trees, bushes, and some props will now automatically rotate when you're placing them one by one. The days of placing and rotating and placing and rotating are behind us. Finally, the biggie, I think. This land value bug has been my nemesis since I first got my hands on the game, and I'm so glad to see some big strides in tackling it. So, 
service coverage of healthcare, education, police, and telecom, reachability of commercial services, public transportation stops and stations, noise, water, air, and ground pollution, and shorelines now all affect land value. There is now a maximum limit to the land value bonus factor. And when you open the land value info view, there are a few changes. What used to be the building land value info mode has been changed to the land value source info mode. Rent to high warning notifications are more visible in this view. And my favorite, there is a land value tooltip that shows the monetary value of the land or building it is hovering over. This is an old map that I haven't played on in a long while. Watch what happens when I load it in this patch. This is the land value info screen. And when I unpause and speed up time, bam, we can see the changes in action. I wouldn't be surprised if old saves still carry over some wonkiness through the patch, but I'm personally stoked to start a new city and see how things feel now. I anticipate it'll be a pretty positive experience. There are plenty of fixes I didn't cover, including quite a few crash to desktop related fixes. As soon as it's public, I'll add a link to the full patch notes in the description below. It will be worth a read. And while you're down there, let me know in the comments if you would be interested in seeing a complete beginner attempt map making. Maybe we could learn the ropes together. Now, to be clear, these bug fixes and improvements are part of a patch to the base game that does not require further payment, just like the inclusion of Paradox Mods is. The only thing you would need to pay for in today's video is the Beach Properties Asset Pack if you had not already purchased the Ultimate Edition or Expansion Pass that it was included with. Want to see why this city's average land value is 246,482 cent looking monies per cell? Click the video on screen now to watch my spicy take on the one tile challenge and enjoy the update.